Hey guys, Mr. Backberg here. In this video, we're going to look at the special relationships between the side lengths in a 45-45-90 triangle. So here we have a picture of a 45-45-90 triangle drawn out. And what those numbers are representing is those are the angle measures within this triangle. But we're not so much focused on the angle measures themselves. What we're mainly focused on is a special relationship between the side lengths within this triangle. So I'm going to write out the relationship, and then I'll talk a little bit about what it means. So here's how we're going to set up our triangle. In our 45, 45, 90 triangle, we represent the legs with an x value. And then the hypotenuse across from the 90 degree angle is x root 2. So what that means If we know what the length of one of the legs of our triangle is, we're able to figure out the lengths of all the other sides of the triangle. Since this is an isosceles triangle, these x values end up being exactly the same. So this leg is the same exact length as this leg. And then if we want to find the hypotenuse, what we're going to do is we're going to take the length of the leg times the square root of 2. Now we can also use that to go the opposite direction. If we know what the length of the hypotenuse is and we want to find a length of the leg, well, we're going in the opposite direction, so we're not going to multiply by the square root of 2 anymore. This time, if we want to find the length of the leg, what we're going to do is we're going to take the hypotenuse and divide it by the square root of 2. So in this picture, we're given a 45, 45, 90 triangle. We're given one of the legs as 8, and what we want to do is we want to go through and find the missing sides of our triangle. Since this triangle is an isosceles triangle, this 45 degree angle is going to be congruent to that 45 degree angle, which means that these two sides have to be congruent. So if this leg is 8, this other leg also has to be 8. Now if we're trying to find the hypotenuse, we're going to use that relationship that we just talked about. If we have the length of the leg, then in order to find the hypotenuse, what we're going to do is we're going to take the leg times the square root of 2. So if we take 8 times the square root of 2, we just get 8 root 2. There's no simplifying that we can do there, so that's just our answer. So the missing leg was 8, the missing hypotenuse is 8 root 2. In this example, we've got another 45, 45, 90 triangle. We're given this leg as 3 root 2, so if we want to find the other leg, since it's isosceles, it's got to be exactly the same, so that leg will also be 3 root 2. And then if we want to go from leg to hypotenuse, we take that length, so 3 root 2, and we have to multiply by the square root of 2. Now this one, there is some simplifying that we can do. If we take root 2 times root 2, those things will multiply together to give us just a regular 2, but we can't forget about that 3 that's out in front. We have to multiply by that as well. So 3 times 2, we end up with 6 as the length of that hypotenuse. Now this example is a little bit different. This time we're given the length of the hypotenuse and we want to work to find the length of the legs. Okay, now normally going from leg to hypotenuse we would multiply by the square root of 2, but we're going the opposite direction this time. So what we're going to do, if we have the hypotenuse and we want to find the length of the leg, is we're going to take that length, but this time instead of multiplying, we're going in the opposite direction, so we have to do the opposite thing. So we're going to divide by the square root of 2. Now in this one, since we have times the square root of 2 on top and divided by the square root of 2 on bottom, those root 2's will just cancel each other out and we'll just have the 5 left over. So the length of this leg across the bottom is 5, which means that the length of this other leg is also 5, since this is an isosceles triangle. In our last example, we're given the length of the hypotenuse as 6, and we're going to work on finding the length of the legs. So going from hypotenuse to leg, we're going to divide by the square root of 2. So we have to take 6 divided by the square root of 2. But now we have to remember some things that we talked about with radicals. With this one, we don't want to leave a radical on the bottom of a fraction. So we have to rationalize this. In order to rationalize this, we're going to have to multiply top and bottom by the square root of 2. Now on top, there's not much that we can do with 6 root 2. So that's just going to stay as 6 times the square root of 2. On bottom, if we take root 2 times root 2, we're just going to get plain 2 as our answer. So we have 6 root 2 over 2, but then we can do a little bit of simplifying with our fraction. If we look at this 6 and this 2, that's going to reduce down to just 3. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So we have 3 root 2 as the length of that leg. And since that leg on the right hand side is 3 root 2, this other leg across the top would also have to be 3 root 2. 
That's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching.